Welcome to Aprendamos Español, our third lesson in our intermediate course. In this course, we're going to cover how to express the thought, I have done something. Like if you were to say, I have eaten, or I have spoken. That is known as the perfect tense. Then after that, we're going to talk about how to express the thought, I had done something. Like if you were to say, I had already eaten, or I had not spoken to her. That is known as the past perfect tense. And then after that, we're going to go over how to use the perfect tense and the past perfect tense when we have reflexive verbs like llamarse or when we have direct and indirect objects. And then after that, we're going to practice. So let's get started. The perfect tense is the thought, I have done something. Like if you were to say, I have eaten, or I have spoken, or she has not said anything. Typically in English, it's pretty simple to express the perfect tense. You just take your pronoun, I, you, he, she, we, and then you put have or has, depending on who's doing it. Like it's I have, it's he has. You would not say he had or she had. And then you take your past participle. For example, you would say, I, that's a pronoun, have, and then you would, your past participle, spoken. I have spoken. That is a perfect tense thought. Pretty straightforward. Well, guess what? In Spanish, it's a little simpler than that. Because your verb for have or has conjugates based on what your pronoun is. And so your pronoun is built into what form of the verb have or has that you use. And so to express have or has in the perfect tense, we use the verb haber. Now, haber means have, but do not get confused. This is not have like I have three dollars or I have a cat. This is have in the sense I have already done this. She has already eaten. See how in that sense there's no possession expressed? Tener is what you use to express possession, but to express events that happened in the past, that form of have is haber. That is the verb you use. And you conjugate haber in the present tense based on who has done the thing. Now, of course, you should already be familiar with the six box, the yo, tu, el, ella, usted, nosotros, vosotros, ellos, ellas, and ustedes. Now, just another note, just to make sure you know that this form here is vosotros. It's spelled just like nosotros, only put a V in the front. Vosotros means y'all informal. You use it when you're talking to a group of friends. Hey, you guys. That is the verb, uh, that is the pronoun for this verb form here. This is mainly used in Argentina and Spain and Chile, but not in the rest of the Spanish-speaking world. And for that reason, most Spanish teachers will not teach you vosotros or any of its conjugations. I think that's dumb. People still use it, so I think it's a good idea to learn it. So let's continue. So we conjugate haber, which is the verb have or has, in the present tense to form the perfect tense. So, e means I have. It's yo, e, tu, as, you have, informal. El, ella, usted, a, he or she has, or you have, formal. Nosotros, hemos, we have. Vosotros, habéis, y'all have. And then ellos, ellas, or ustedes, han, they have, or in the formal way, Y'all have. Write this down and commit it to memory. It is the key to understanding the perfect tense. So now that we have the have part, what about the eaten, spoken, written, or uh, sung part of the perfect tense? Well, we take our verb and we put it into something called the past participle. You can see that right here in English, the word spoken, that is the past participle of the verb speak. Well, in Spanish, to turn a verb into its past participle, you take your verb, and if your verb has an ER or an IR at its ending, replace those with ido. Or if your verb has an AR at its ending, replace that with ad. Let me give you an example. What if I wanted to say, I have spoken? What if I wanted to say this sentence up here, put it in Spanish? 
Well, we already know what our I have is. It's E. And so that's our first part. We would say E. Now, what about spoken? Spoken in Spanish, the verb to speak is hablar. So we would take the verb hablar. Now, what we have to do is replace, since it's an AR verb, replace that AR with auto. And so our answer becomes E hablado. That is how you say it. What if I were to say, I have eaten? You would take the I have, which is E, and then we take our verb, which is comer. Comer ends in an ER. We replace the ER with ido. E comido. I have eaten. And so that's pretty straightforward. That's how you form the perfect tense. You just take your I have, you have, he, she has, we have, y'all have, or they have verb form of haber, and then after that you take your verb and just replace the ending with ido if it's an erir verb, replace the ending with auto if it's an ar verb, and bam, there you go, perfect tense. Now, there is a note that I want to make about the past participle, because that confuses a lot of people. To keep it simple, there is a difference between the past tense and the past participle. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here. We have a bunch of past tense words here. Ate, spoke, wrote, and saw. If you notice, the past tense can go right next to a pronoun and there's no issue. You can say, I ate, I spoke, I wrote, or I saw. Or you can say, he ate, he spoke, he wrote, or he saw. You can take a pronoun and put it right in front of the past tense. Now, with the past participle, you cannot do that. Your pronoun does not go next to your past participle. You need to put the word have in the middle. You would not say I eaten, or I spoken, or I written, or I seen. That is not how you would communicate it, unless you're Jar Jar Binks, but that's another story. You would say I have eaten, I have spoken, I have written, or I have seen. So the past participle, simply put, is what you put after the verb have. It's what you, it's the past, it's the form of the past tense that you cannot put right next to your pronoun. In general, your perfect tenses, all of them, use the past participle. They do not use the imperfect or the preterite right next to the pronoun when you're forming your perfect tense sentence. Or said another way, it's like this. If you're making a simple I did statement, like I ate, or I swam, or I wrote, you just take your pronoun, put it right next to your verb, simple past tense. But if you have this have in the middle here, which is haber in Spanish, then this verb right here needs to be in the past participle form. Whatever comes after your have goes in the past participle form, pretty straightforward. Now, like I said before, in general, to form your past participles, if it's a verb that ends in ER or IR, you just turn that into ido. But if it's a verb that ends in AR, turn the AR into auto. And I want to go over a few more examples just to make sure that we understand this. Now, let's look at the verb comer. We have, which means eat, and we want it in the I have form. So we're trying to say I have eaten. So you remember your I have would be E, and then you take comer, you replace the ER with ido, and it becomes E comido. I have eaten. Or what about vivir? Vivir means to live. Okay, and this is an IR verb, so we're still going to use ido. So we want it in the he has form. Well, what is the he has form of haber? That is a if you recall from the six box that we drew earlier. And so you replace your IR with ido. Ha vivido. He has lived. Like if you were going to say he has lived here for three years. Anyway, now let's move on to escuchar. Escuchar means to listen. So we want it in the we have form. So we're trying to say we have listened. You would simply find your we have conjugation, which would be amos. Remember, these are all from the verb haber. You would take amos, and then you would take escuchar. It ends in ar, and so you would turn it into auto. 
See, AR becomes auto. Hemos escuchado. We have listened. And hablar. Okay, hablar meaning to talk or speak. And you want the they have form. So you're trying to say they have spoken. So what you would do there is you would take your form of haber, because remember, that's what the verb have is, and you would find the they version, which would just be on the they conjugation. And then you would take hablar, it ends in ar, and ar becomes auto. And an easy way to remember this is that I and IR, the I and Edo, it matches the A and AR, the A and auto, they match. An easy way to think about it. And typically, AR, ER and IR verbs are associated together in your conjugations. So it would be on, a, blado. They have spoken. So that's just the general idea of how to form the perfect tense. Now, of course, as with everything in Spanish, you have a lot of irregulars. And so you have some irregular past participles where it's not just as simple as replace the ER with ido or replace the AR with auto, where you actually have to turn the past participle into something completely different. Here is a general list of the irregular past participles in Spanish just to get you started and just to get you comfortable with it. Hacer means to do or to make. It's past participle is hecho. So hacer means do, hecho means done, decir means spoken, I'm sorry, decir means to tell, dicho means told. Like you would say, I have told you, it would be te he dicho, okay? Caer meaning to fall, its past participle is caído. Escribir meaning to write, its past participle, escrito, and so on and so forth. Ver becomes visto, volver meaning to come back or to return, becomes vuelto. And by the way, ver means to watch or to see. Resolver, to resolve, becomes resuelto. Morir, to die, becomes muerto. Poner, to put, becomes puesto in its past participle. Romper, meaning to break, becomes roto. Abrir, meaning to open, becomes abierto. Cubrir, meaning to cover, becomes cubierto. Creer, meaning to believe, becomes creído, and traer, to bring, becomes traído. So these are the most common, irregular, past participles in Spanish. So anytime you're making an I have statement or an I had statement, and you come to these verbs, you would not say a ha sido. That is wrong, and it will get you laughed at by any native speaker of the language. It would be he hecho. So that's the general idea of the irregular past participles. Now, I want to make a note about compound words or compound verbs. There are some verbs in Spanish that are based on other verbs. Like, look at this first one, deshacer. And by the way, this is all one word. These are all one word. This is not com, space, poner. It's componer. This is not des, space, hacer. It is deshacer. This is all one word. So, hacer means to do. Deshacer means to undo or to unmake. And so because deshacer is based on the verb hacer, its past participle would be in the same form as the past participle of hacer. And so if you were to say, I have undone something, you would say, he deshecho. So the hacer part would turn into hecho still, and then you would just leave this des part attached to it. Deshecho. Poner means to put Whereas componer means to put together or to compose. So if you were to say, I have composed, it would be he compuesto. Describir is based on the verb escribir. And so it would conjugate and have the same type of past participle because it's based on escribir. Describir means to describe, whereas escribir just means to write. So if you were to say, I have described something, it would be he descrito. See how the escrito part carries over because it's escribir over here? Now, what about volver? Volver, like I said, means to return. Like if you were to say, I returned home or I returned from my trip. Whereas de volver means to give back. Like if you were to say, he gave me back my book or she gave me my car back. De volver is based on volver, and so the volver part of it would conjugate and have the same participle 
it would be devuelto, because volver becomes vuelto in its past participle. So if you were to say, I have given it back, it'd be lo he devuelto, for example. So that is a note on the irregular past participles. You will see these in the perfect tense, which you just learned, which is I have done something. You will see them in the past perfect tense, which we're about to go over, which is I had done something. And you will also see them in the future perfect tense and in the conditional perfect tense. And those are for a separate lesson in the advanced course if you want to refer to them. So now let us practice with the perfect tense just to make sure we understand what we're doing here. You can pause the video and work on these and then we'll go over them together. All right, so I assume you have paused the video, worked on them. Now we're gonna go over these examples. We have spoken with her. We know that this have verb here is going to be in the we form, so it becomes Amos. What is the verb to speak? Hablar. And so hablar is an AR verb, so it becomes hablado. Hemos hablado with her con ella. Hemos hablado con ella. We have spoken with her. Pretty simple. We're done there. How about number two? She has not eaten the pizza. This has, don't be confused, this is just another form of the verb have. It's still the same verb. If you see have or has, that is still haber, just like I showed you on the front where I had the word haber and it was next to have and has. So, because we have this not here, this negative statement, we always put the no in front of our statement. So it would be no, what is the she has form? No, a. Remember, a means she has or he has. No, a. Then comer for eaten becomes comido. No, a comido. La pizza. Okay? She has not eaten the pizza. Why? Because it was from Sparrows and it dried out. Anyway, number three. They have not returned yet. Okay? So remember, because it's something they have not done, we put the no in front. And then we also put this get in front. No todavía. They, so this is not yet. No todavía literally means not yet. If you have yet in the sentence, yet typically will come before your conjugation. So we all, the have here is conjugated in the they form. So what's the they form? No todavía an. That is the verb have, which is haber in the they form. So the they have is an. And return is volver. And so we need vuelto. It's not volvido, it's vuelto. And that is a U. I'm sorry it's drawn so sloppy. My handwriting is not the best sometimes. So, no todavía han vuelto. They have not yet returned. Or literally what this says is not yet have they returned. Kind of sounds like Yoda, doesn't it? Oh, well, but that's how Spanish sounds, and it's important to just get used to it if you're going to be fluent enough to speak to natives. So I think that we have pretty straightforwardly and sufficiently covered how to speak in the perfect tense, how to make an I have statement. Now, what about an I had statement? What if you were to say you had done something, like I had not gone to the movies yet, or she had already told me that? Well, that is something called the past perfect tense. The past perfect tense expresses what you had done. Now, in English, this is pretty simple, and it's pretty much just like the perfect tense. Typically, what you will do is you will take your pronoun. Now, let's, like, we'll use again I to keep it simple. Then you take had. You take your pronoun, then had, then your past participle. I had eaten. Okay? And then we're pretty much done. I had eaten. Or I had not eaten. But either way, you would just take your pronoun, and then had, and then your past participle done. Spanish again, is more simple. This is why I say Spanish for the win. Spanish is very simple. Your verb for had, which is haber, is the same verb, and your conjugations already build the pronoun into the verb. So haber by itself means has or have. But when we put it in the past tense, it now means had, just like the past tense of have is had in English. The past tense of have is had in Spanish, we just take our verb for have and put it in the past tense. 
The past tense that we're going to most commonly see is the imperfect tense. We don't really use the preterite haber that much in Spanish, but when we do, it's for special situations. But for the most part, you actually are going to use the imperfect form of haber to say your had statement. Había, I had. Habías, you had. Había, he or she had, or you had formal. Habíamos, we had. Habíais, y'all had, informal. And habían means they had, or y'all had, formal. And remember, this is yo, this is tú, this is él, ella, and usted. This is nosotros, this is vosotros, and this is ellos, ellas, and ustedes. Okay? So remember, these same pronouns are going to be in their same positions in the sixth box the whole time. There's no need for confusion. So let's take a statement, for example, I had eaten. You would find your I had, which is había, and you already know how to form your past participle, so we're just going to go straight through that. Había comido. I had eaten. What if I were going to say I had not eaten? You would just put no in front of this statement, and it would become no había comido. And a question that my students used to ask me, and I just want to make sure this is straightforward enough for you all to understand, you notice that the yo and the el, ella, usted form use the same conjugation. There's había here, there's había here as well. How can you tell the difference? Typically, if you're having a conversation with someone, the context clues will let you know who they're talking about. But other than that, if you want to be perfectly clear, just put your yo in front of it or your el, ella, usted in front of it, just so you're perfectly clear who you're talking about, if you need to make that distinction. So it's pretty straightforward to form the past perfect tense. The only difference between this and the regular perfect tense is that haber itself is in the past tense. That's it. But you still conjugate it based on who is doing it. So now let's move on. Let's actually put this into practice. We have some examples here. We had already done our homework. We know that the we had is uh, habíamos because it is the nosotros form. But what about this already? We have words like yet and already. Those words like yet and already go before your conjugated verb. And so already means ya, and this is ya in Spanish. So you would say ya habíamos hecho, remember it's not ha sido, nuestra tarea. Ya habíamos hecho nuestra tarea. And remember, nuestra means our, it has to be feminine because tarea, what it's referring to is feminine. That's just a little note to be careful. When you arrived, I had already left. Now, this is an interesting case because you actually have two tenses here. You have you arrived, which is the preterite tense, and then you have I had already left, which is the past perfect tense. So you can use the past perfect tense with other forms of the past tense, you just have to make sure not to mix them up. So the when you arrived part, that's just cuando llegaste, okay? It's from the verb llegar. Cuando llegaste, I had already left. Remember, you're already, goes in front. It would be cuando llegaste, ya había, and then you would say salido, okay? From salir, ya había salido. Okay, cuando llegaste, ya había salido. So that is a good example to make the point. When you use the past perfect tense in Spanish, just like in English, you can use it to form an order of past events. Like if you were to say, he had already eaten when I got home, or she had not done her homework when class started, or something like that. If you're talking about multiple events in the past and you're trying to say which one already happened and when which one happened, and you're trying to put them in order, you use the past perfect tense for that. Same in Spanish as in English. Pretty straightforward. I had never eaten turkey before last year. So never also goes out there. When you have words like already or yet or never, words that describe frequency, you always put your frequency words in front of your past perfect statement. 
So it would be nunca. What is I had? Había comido from comer turkey. El pavo. What's before? Antes del año pasado. And I hope this all shows up on the screen. That was a pretty long sentence. Never had I eaten turkey before the past year or the year past. You see, you have two things in the past here. You have last year as a past event and you have eating turkey as a past event. And you're trying to put them in order. That's why you use the past perfect tense. Or I hadn't written my essay when class began. So because it's hadn't, this negative statement right here, that's just had not. It's the same. Had it and had not are the same thing. So you put no in front. No había, I had not, written escrito, because remember it comes from the verb escribir, mi ensayo cuando la clase empezó. Okay? This is preterite right here. The class began because it's a, an, a singular event and it's a plot advancing event in the past. And we went over that in our preterite versus imperfect video. And so if you need to go over that, that's fine. So the had or hadn't, no había, means I had not. It also means I hadn't. No había escrito mi ensayo cuando la clase empezó. So it's helpful to make sure you already know how to use the preterite and the perfect tense before you go into the uh, past perfect and perfect tenses. So that's an example of how to use the past perfect tense. Now we need to cover some ground rules about how to use the perfect tense and the past perfect tense when you're dealing with reflexive verbs. So you should already have a general idea of what a reflexive verb is. Like levantarse, for example, it's a verb that ends in se, and the se means oneself. Levantar means to lift up, so levantarse is a verb means to lift up oneself. In English, we say to get up. Like if you, like if you get up out of your seat, you get up out of bed, you get up off of the sofa, you get the idea. Caerse means to fall down or to stumble oneself over, like if you're walking and then you trip or something like that. And then dormirse means to fall asleep or to put oneself to sleep. So you have reflexive verbs in Spanish, and you should have already learned this in Spanish 1. If not, we will also go over that as well. And when you're dealing with any kind of perfect tense, whether it's the regular perfect tense, the past perfect tense, the future perfect, conditional perfect, doesn't matter any kind of perfect tense, you always put your reflexive pronoun first, then your haber, then your past participle. And so let me show you how that works. So your reflexive pronoun is, of course, say, and so that goes first. Say we want the yo form of levantarse, and we want it in the perfect tense. So basically what we're trying to do is take get up, and we're trying to say I do that thing, and we're putting the perfect tense, which is have, so we're trying to say, I have gotten up, or I have gotten myself up. The first thing you do is take your reflexive pronoun, which is say, put it first, but because we need it in the yo form, that is may. Then after that, we put our form of haber. Because we need the yo form of haber, we put e, and then we put levantar, which is our verb in the past participle. Me, e, Levantado. I have lifted myself up, or I have gotten myself up. The same thing in the past perfect tense. You take your reflexive pronoun, put it first, then you take your form of haber, you put that next, what's yo form of haber? Me había. Then guess what? The past participle stays the same. Levantado. So this one means I have gotten myself up. This one means I had gotten myself up. So as you can see, you need to remember the order. It goes reflexive pronoun, then haber, then past participle. Reflexive pronoun, then haber, then past participle. Let's practice that some more. Let's go over here to caerse. Caerse means to fall over, or literally in Spanish, this means to fall oneself down. I know it's funny, why is that reflexive? Well, I don't know, but that's Spanish for you. 
So we want it in the Emily form. Well, Emily is one woman. And so what is our pronoun for one woman? That's ella, because Emily is a she. So we want to put all of this in the ella form. The first thing we do is take our reflexive pronoun, which is say, and put it in the ella form, because Emily is a she. And so that would just be say. And then we take our, our haber, and because this is perfect tense, we just use the regular present tense of haber. What is the ella form of haber? A. And then we take our verb, which is calle, and we put it in the past participle. This one was irregular. It's caído. So se ha caído. She has fallen over. Or she has fallen herself down. So typically in Spanish, when you see se next to a, it's probably a reflexive pronoun in the perfect tense. There's also passive se, but that's another lesson altogether. We'll get to that in, in the advanced course. So now you have past perfect. So it's the exact same procedure. You're trying to say she had fallen down this time, not she has fallen down. So what you would do is for past perfect, you would start with your reflexive pronoun, which in this case would be the a form of se, which is just se. Then instead of a, what is the she had? It's se había. And then the past participle stays the same. I don't know why my eye looks like a hook, but anyway, se ha caído. She had fallen down. So this one is she has fallen down. This one is she had fallen down. Now let's do dormirse, just for good practice, third time's the charm. Anyway, dormirse means to fall asleep, or literally it means to put oneself to sleep. So you have the se, and we're trying to find the tu form of this. So let's start with the perfect tense. So you put the Reflexive pronoun se in the tu form, which is te, because remember, reflexive pronoun comes first. Then you find the conjugation of haber in the tu form, which would be as. And then finally, you take your verb dormir and conjugate it in the past participle, which is dormido. Pretty straightforward. Te has dormido. You have fallen asleep or you have put yourself to sleep. Then, if you want to make it in the past perfect, you had fallen asleep, or you had already fallen asleep, you would take, again, your reflexive pronoun comes first, which is still te, because we're in the tu form. Then, because it's past perfect, we take this verb and put it in the past tense. It would be habías, te habías, then our past participle stays the same. Te habías dormido. You had fallen asleep. Pretty straightforward. So remember, the formula goes reflexive pronoun, then your form of haber, whether it's present tense or past tense, then comes your past participle. Reflexive pronoun, haber, past participle. Or if you want to simplify it, it goes reflexive pronoun, then your perfect or past perfect statement. So now let's move on to talking about direct objects and indirect objects. Let's start with direct objects. The direct object is the it and the those in the sentence. Now, that might sound very confusing. What in the world does he mean by that? Well, here is what I mean. If I were to make the statement, I saw it, or I throw it, or I eat it, or I buy those, the it or the those is something that I am acting on in the sentence. Or if you were to say, Billy ate those, okay? What is getting acted on in the sentence? Those. Or if I had to say, we ate it. It is the thing that is being acted on in the sentence. So another way to think of the direct object is that which is acted on in the sentence. And so the thing that is acted on is your direct object in the sentence. Your direct object comes before your form of haber, and then after that comes your past participle. It goes direct object, haber, past participle. Very straightforward. Like if I were to say, I have seen it, this I have seen is my perfect tense statement. And so I would put my direct object before my perfect tense statement. And so how do I say it? Lo. And then I say, I have seen. So it'd be lo he visto. Because visto comes from ver, to see. Lo he visto. I have seen it. Or literally, this is it I have seen. 
Okay? Same thing with the past perfect. You have your past perfect, which is I had seen, but what have you seen? What is acted on in the sentence it? So it would be lo había visto. Okay? I had seen it. Remember, your direct object or your it comes first, and then your perfect tense statement or your past perfect tense statement. The same thing goes even if it's plural. Like, I haven't seen those. Now remember, because you have this haven't, this negative part here, you would just put no in front of the statement. So you would say no, and what about the those? That would just be the plural of lo, which is los. So it would be no los he visto. Okay? No los he visto. So when you think about it kind of like order of operations, remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sal, you put your no first, then you put your yet or never type word, and then after that, you put your direct object, and then after that, you put your uh, perfect tense or past perfect tense statement. Or you can just follow along with these examples, and you'll be able to pick up the pattern. What about I haven't seen those yet, or I hadn't seen those yet? This is a past perfect statement, but because we have this no here, that comes first, no, and then those would be los again, and because it's I hadn't seen, this is past perfect, no los había visto. But guess what we also have here? Yet. So where would the yet go? The yet always goes right after the no. So it'd be no todavía los había visto. No todavía las había visto. Remember, your yet comes right after your no. And a not yet statement, it's you put the not and the yet first, and then you make the rest of the statement. Now let's talk about the indirect object. Now, this kind of gets a little more confusing, but don't worry, I'm going to explain it as simply as I know how. You should already know about double object pronouns going into this, by the way. Double object pronouns is when you have a direct object and an indirect object in a sentence together, which we have here, and I am going to show you. But first, let me explain to you what the indirect object is. The indirect object is the to you or the to me in the sentence. Another way to think about it is the indirect object is your recipient in the sentence. For example, in the statement, I throw it at Billy, okay, now it is being acted on because that's what's being thrown, so that is our direct object, like from the last page. But who is receiving the thing that's thrown? Billy. So Billy is the recipient of what's being acted on, and so because of that, he would be the indirect object. In this case, it would be to him. But you get the idea. So if I were to say, I have given it to you, what is being acted on in this sentence? It. But who is receiving it? You are. So that would make you the indirect object of the sentence. Or if I were to say, my mother said it to my brother. My mother is the subject of the sentence because she's the one that's doing the action. It is being acted on because that is what she said. And then my brother is the recipient of that it, and so my brother would be the indirect object in a sense. I hope that clarifies it. A simple way to think about it is this, and I want you to remember this so you can always remember the distinction between direct and indirect object, and it goes like this. The subject gives the direct object to the indirect object. The subject gives the direct object to the indirect object. Like if I were to say, I bought a car for my wife, I am the subject, what did I give her? A car, so the car is a direct object. Who did I give it to? My wife, and so my wife is the indirect object. The subject gives the direct object to the indirect object. And that's just a straightforward way to remember the difference between indirect objects and direct objects. Now let's move on. So when you have a perfect tense statement or a past perfect tense statement and you're using it with an indirect object, you put the indirect object, which is the recipient, first. Then you put the direct object, which is the thing that's acted on, 
And then finally, you put your perfect statement or your past perfect statement, which is I bear and then your past participle. So most of the time in Spanish, your indirect object is going to be a person and your direct object is going to be a thing. Like if you were to say, um, I buy the car for my wife, like I said before, my wife is a person, but I'm giving her a thing. And so I put the who before the what. In Spanish, you put the indirect object pronoun before the direct object pronoun. So you always put the who before the what because people are more important than things. Maybe it's a quick, shorthanded way to remember that. So take the statement, I had given it to you. This is perfect tense. So first we find our indirect object or our recipient. That is to you. That comes first. That would be te. Then you have the it, which is the direct object, that comes second, that'd be lo, and then you have I have given. That's just a bare and past participle. That's just a regular old perfect statement. Te lo he dado. Because that comes from dar, which is to give. Te lo he dado. To you it I have given. Very straightforward. So remember, the, inter the recipient, the thing being given, then your perfect tense statement. Very straightforward. How about I haven't given it to you yet? See how we have this get here and we have this not? So it would become no todavía, which is not yet. Now we find our who or our recipient in the sense, no todavía te lo he, oh, that's a junky looking e, he dado, okay? No todavía te lo he dado. Okay? Not yet to you it have I given. Very straightforward. Or I haven't given it to you yet. How about we haven't given those to her? Now the to her would be le and the those would be los. Now if you recall from Spanish 1, you learn that you cannot lay low. And so if both your direct object and your indirect object pronouns start with an L, you must change your recipient pronoun or your indirect object into a se. And so it becomes se los, and then we have, that's past perfect. So it becomes se los habíamos dado. Okay, se los habíamos dado, to her, them, had we given, or we had given those to her. How about we hadn't given those to her? So it's basically the same statement as before, but the only difference is instead of had, it's hadn't. All we really do is put no in front of this statement. So it becomes no se los habíamos Dado. And just a little note, just to make sure you know, when you have an I with an accent mark, say that I harder. No se los habíamos dado. you got to say it with some authority. Spanish is fun that way. It gives you an excuse to say syllables that are stressed that you just can't in boring old English. Now that you understand that, let's have some practice. I've got nine problems in this problem set that I want you to work on. And I'm going to read them all off to you. Then you should pause the video and work on them. And then we will work on them together. I have eaten the food. She hasn't done her homework. They haven't helped her. We have told it to her. What have you done? I hadn't fallen asleep yet. Excuse the very Cartoon Network looking D there. I had already gotten up when you called me. At 7 p.m., the cat hadn't fallen down yet. When I saw her yesterday, she hadn't written anything. Okay, so now I want you to pause the video and work on these, and then we will go through all of them together. Okay, so at this point, I assume you have already paused the video, and you've already worked on them, and now we're ready to go through them together just to make sure you understand. So as you can tell, everything on this page is just regular old perfect tense. Have, hasn't, haven't, have, and have. This is all regular perfect tense. Nothing too hard. I have eaten the food would just be he comido la 
comida. And if you don't understand how we arrived at this conclusion, just go back to the beginning of the video and rewatch the part about the perfect tense. She hasn't done her homework. Remember, because you have this not here, you put no in front, it'd be no ha hecho su tarea. Very straightforward. They haven't helped her. Now, it depends on what region you're in, whether or not you count her as a recipient or whether or not you count her as, as someone that's acted on. In Latin America, you would typically say no la an ayudado, okay, which means not her have they helped. But in Spain, you might see this, no le an ayudado. And the debate surrounds whether or not you think that her is the direct object or indirect object in the sense. I'm just going to write this distinction. This is mostly seen in Latin America, okay? Whereas this is mostly seen in Spain, okay? So that's a debate of indirect and direct object. That's for a different lesson. But for the purposes of my classes, both answers are acceptable because they're just regional differences. We haven't told it to her. So you know that because we have told it to her. Sorry, it's we have told it to her. So you know, you, you know that to her is le, and then you have this it, which is lo. But are you allowed to have those together? Absolutely not, because you cannot lay low. So you must turn that into a say. And so your answer then becomes say lo, and then we have amos, and then told is from decir, meaning to tell. So it's dicho. Se lo hemos dicho. To her it have we told. Now let's move on. What have you done? Que has hecho. Now remember, because it's a question in Spanish, you always open with the upside down question mark and close with the regular question mark. So that's pretty much the perfect tense. Now that you understand that, let's move on to the past perfect tense. So you see how this is hadn't, had, hadn't, and hadn't. So that's just had. This is past perfect. So I hadn't fallen asleep yet. Well, guess what? We already talked about the verb to fall asleep. That is dormirse. That is reflexive. Because that comes from a reflexive verb, we need to deal with the reflexive pronoun first. But we also have this no here. The no always comes first even before your reflexive pronoun. So it would be no. Then what's our reflexive pronoun? Because it's I, it would be me había dormido. No me había dormido. I hadn't fallen asleep. Now, as I said before, this get here goes right after your no. So your todavía gets built in right here. So it becomes no todavía me había dormido. No todavía me había dormido. Remember, to be very careful with your yet. Your yet goes right after your no. So finally, I had already gotten up when you called me. Now, remember, to get up is a reflexive verb also. That is levantarse. Remember, like get up out of the chair, get up out of the bed, levantarse. So because we're saying we had already done this, that's past perfect. And so... We first need to deal with our reflexive pronoun, which would be me, because it's in the I form or the yo form. Me había, and like I said before, this already goes right in there. So it's ya. So it's actually, in this case, because we have already coming right before reflexive pronoun, that would go in the very beginning of the sentence. Okay? Already works in a, as a special case when you're making a positive statement. So, ya me había levantado cuando me llamaste en por teléfono. Okay? Because you're not just calling me a name, you're calling me on the telephone. So, already myself... Had I gotten up when you called me for by the telephone, 
Ya me había levantado cuando me llamaste por teléfono. How about at 7 p.m. the cat hadn't fallen down yet? Now remember, you have the no here and you also have the yet. But you have this at 7 p.m. You put your background information first. So it'd be a las siete el gato no todavía se había caído. A las siete, el gato no todavía se había caído. It's kind of a tongue twister, isn't it? But the basic rule to remember here is that when you have your reflexive pronoun, you put the reflexive pronoun first, then make your perfect tense statement. That's generally what you need to remember. But all of the at 7 p.m. and not yet, that's all background information that goes first. How about the final one? When I saw her yesterday, she had not written anything. It would be... Cuando la vi, or you could say cuando le vi, if it's in Spain. Cuando la vi ayer, when I saw her yesterday. Cuando la vi ayer, no había escrito nada. And remember, Spanish opens up and closes with upside down and right side up exclamation marks. Exclamation marks. When her I saw yesterday, nothing had she written down, or she had not written down anything. And so in Spanish, you say she hadn't written down anything. You don't say she had. You say she hadn't written down nothing. That's a double negative, but it works in Spanish. So you get the idea. You could also say, cuando le vi ayer, no había escrito nada. So now that you understand what's going on here, take the time and practice the perfect tense and the past perfect tense. And if you have any questions, write them down in the comments below. Aprendamos Español.